And now back in Washington, fallout from the whistleblower's complaint as the formal impeachment inquiry picks up steam. And to help analyze this historic week, I'm joined by Shields and Brooks. That's syndicated columnist Mark Shields and New York Times columnist David Brooks. Hello to both of you. So much going on this week, uh, but I think we know where to start. And that is, David, looking back at this conversation that took place in July between President Trump, the president uh, of Ukraine, uh, the White House continues to say this was a perfectly appropriate, the president said, perfect conversation with a leader of another country. Democrats are saying it was a violation of his oath, impeachable offense. Yeah. I'm a little mystified. I, I think they're sincere. They thought it was exculpatory, but I don't see how they could actually think that. I mean, the, the crucial thing to do with that transcript is to look at the logic chain of the thing. So Trump says, we've been very generous to you. You haven't always been generous to us. We've been more generous than the others. And then, then that follows with, well, maybe you can do us a favor. And that favor is to investigate the Bidens. So it's, it, when you just break down the logic chain, it's a very clear, you, we did this for you, you owe us, here's what you can do for us. And that is, it's not an explicit quid pro quo, but it comes pretty close, I think. Are there shades of, of uh, questions here about what happened in that conversation, Mark, or is it clear cut for you? It, it's clear cut, Judy. I mean, what, what it puts to rest is the lie about the confidence of the uh, Trump campaign. We're leading in all polls where we're ahead. He was so terrified, so intimidated, the President of the United States got on the phone with a leader of Ukraine to get dirt on the one Democrat who in every major poll was beating him uh, and, and that candidate's son. I mean, this, this shows the terror, the intimidation, so, and the false bravado is just totally exposed. And it, it is, it, it, David, I think David was more than kind. It is, it is totally explicit. This, this is a country, Judy, that it has a, a smaller army than that of Sri Lanka. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's sitting on the doorstep of Russia uh, that has shown nothing but Im imperial totalitarian in impulses toward it. Uh, it, it translated into physical action. Um, it's, it's got an economy smaller than that of El Salvador, and we're holding $451 million in the President of the United States. It's a supplicant mendicant. Uh, it's, it's the boss uh, to, the, to the lowest employee. I mean, the power is to totally disproportionate. Anybody has to acknowledge that who sees it. And David, you still have Republicans, though, saying entirely appropriate for the President of the United States to be saying to the leader of Ukraine, we want you to clean up corruption in your country, that that was what Yeah, was well, that, that is appropriate, I suppose, to say. But, you know, the Republicans are not going to break on this. And, that, and that's, I think, when, as we look at impeachment, uh, I vaguely remember Watergate. I was young, but I remember the, a sense of gravity, a sense that we're stepping outside our party lines. At least some people did that, Sam Irvin, other people, Howard Baker. Uh, and we're going to weigh the evidence. And this is so serious, we can't just play normal politics. That's not going to happen this time. Uh, to me, this is already feeling like very normal politics, where the Democrats are going to be all here and the Republicans will be all here, and the idea of stepping outside your partisan affiliation for the sake of the truth, uh, that's just not the way the game is played anymore. Well, I want to ask you both about the role that the whistleblower played in all this. We learned several days ago that this is uh, someone in the, the intelligence community in the last few days, Mark, reporting that it's an analyst at the CIA. We don't have the name. In fact, we're not supposed to have the name. This person is supposed to be, identity is supposed to be protected. But uh, the president's calling uh, this individual a spy, in effect, saying this is somebody who's disloyal to the country. Last week, the president branded the person a, a partisan hack, you'll recall. Uh, it's gone now to, uh, to treachery. I mean, uh, the, the, the person who did it, uh, Judy, uh, assuming that it's a person of rational and, and I think it's an intelligent, and comprehensive, and, and well-written complaint, um, had to know what he, he or she was putting at risk um, in the hothouse in which we live here in Washington, that the identity will eventually be uh, made public. Um, and it, I, it, I think it can only be revealed and described as a, an act of, of great of great courage uh, to do so. And, and pulling in, David, um, a number of other administration officials, which is what's yeah. launching the congressional. That was the big thing I took away from the report, uh, yeah. that it was it's bigger than just one phone call. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's partly the cover-up, but he said it was over a series of months. There was a lot of people who were in a panic about this. And so it, it's not just that one phone call and then he heard, he heard about it. But there was a, a process. There were people who were freaked out about it. And so there's a little more here than just one on one person who's going to be involved in this. David's right, Judy. The, the, he laid out a blueprint. That's what, that's what the, uh, the uh, 
the letter does and the, and the statement does. It's a blueprint for to pursue uh, investigation, to, uh, to interview. And, and, and expand. Fact, and the fact that this person, what, spent four months, collected, uh, talked to a number of different yes. people, didn't just rashly no. uh, set, this, set this out there and throw it out. But the, the question then comes down to is, is, uh, is David the impeachment inquiry? The House is, is doubling down. There, we had uh, uh, Adam Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence, on the program last night saying this is more serious than the Mueller report, which they spent months and months considering. Right. It's certainly narratively cleaner. You can understand it when Russia was much more complicated. And to me, the decision to do impeachment is a mistake. Um, they, I do agree Trump did something impeachable, but this is a political process, not a legal process. There's no obligation to prosecute. And to me, it's a mistake for a couple of reasons. If your object is to get Donald Trump out of the White House, impeachment does not get you there. Because the chance that you will get 20 senators, 20 Republican senators to vote to vote Donald Trump out of office seems to me so remote, it's minuscule. So the m likely outcome of this is that uh, Donald Trump will be say, see, I was acquitted in the Senate. I've vindicated, I beat these people. And so he'll get a little victory and then both parties will go into revolt. And so that's the way it l likely looks to end up. In the meantime, you're trampling over your Democratic primary season. You're not having the debate the voters want, which is about climate change and health care and jobs and stuff like that. You're focusing all the attention on the Democratic side, or the bulk of it, to the Congress, not to the presidential candidates. And to me, so what Pelosi's done, I think, here is t taking a decision that has a very low chance of succeeding to get him out of office, but has huge risks in ways we can't even imagine. And so I, I'm a little nervous about where impeachment is going to get us. Do you think the Democrats are doing the right thing or not? The Democrats are doing the only thing they can do. I mean, what this president has done is, is not outrageous. It's not indefensible. It's criminal. Um, and, and that's what he's done. He has is, he is totally abdicated, abrogated, and corrupted his oath of office. Um, so uh, when, it, when it comes to making this decision, I, I think it, the preeminent national American political leader of the 21st century is the Speaker of the House. Uh, more so than any president. She single-handedly passed uh, the Affordable Care Act. Um, she is the one major figure uh, in the national firmament of any presidential candidate who opposed the folly and the debacle and the tragedy of the war in Iraq. She put at risk her majority to pass the Affordable Care Act, covering 17 million Americans, 2 million of whom have lost their coverage as a result of Donald Trump's policies in the last year alone. And she knew she was losing her majority, and she came back. Uh, she, is not, she has avoided the rush to join the pound of flesh club. Uh, let's get, double, get them for double parking outside of the orphanage on Capitol on Christmas Eve. Um, th this, this is just too serious. You can't turn your back on it. I agree with David. It may not be politically good timing, expedient. It would be an act of total irresponsibility not to act when you have the evidence given to the Democrats. How do you? Yeah, I, you know, there's this thing called the ethic of responsibility. What's the actual outcome of the decision? And maybe she couldn't act, but she said, I will not do impeachment unless there's a bipartisan upswell of support for this. And there is not that. And that will never happen right now. And so I, I think she was, she was forced into it by the pressure in her own party, by her own caucus. But the House is not the, ma the central question here. The Senate is the central question here. And it's the Senate that's going to give Trump this victory. In the meantime, I just think she's given Trump the fight he wants, which is the fight against the congressional Democrats, not about policy, not about things that actually affect people's lives, but uh, just a personality, reality TV brawl with Inside the Beltway. And to me, that's the fight he wants. I don't know where it'll go. It'll spin wildly out of control over the next several months. But it's, to me, it's not the, the, the ethic of responsibility is what can I do to get Donald Trump out of the White House. And this is not the right path, in my view. I, I would say this, Judy, that unlike uh, David and, and perhaps Secretary Clinton, I do not believe people on the other side are irredeemable. Um, I, I really do believe that when confronted with the evidence and the reality, um, and that this, we have seen just the beginning. This is the tip uh, of the of camel's nose that we've seen. Uh, I you think mean in terms of, 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 of what's gone on. And I think when people come and are under oath and are sworn to testify, I think we'll find more. And I think Republicans, uh, you know, at, at the core are, are Americans before they're Republicans. And uh, yes, there's a herd mentality and a silo uh, attitude right now. But I, I, I do think that uh, when, the, when the evidence becomes overwhelming, which I think it will be, um, I think they'll act. What do you think, David, if not an impeachment inquiry, what should the, what should Democrats do? Well, they could have censured him. 
and then say, let's have an election. We're in an election year. Let's have an election about this. And then they can investigate and lay before the American people everything that's happened. I think the inquiry is totally fine. Uh, but let's not t have this process swallow up an election year. We have an elections for a reason. We happen to be in the middle one. Uh, and let's do that. And I think this election was, a, you know, it's a good moment for the Democratic Party. It's an exciting election, a lot of ideas. And to overshadow that, uh, to me, a lot of people are going to take a look at this and say, well, we could have settled this with 100 million voters around the country or 100 millionaires in the Senate. Who, who should have the power here? He, this is, this is a question, Jody, of he is asking, if not demanding and coercing, uh, an ally, uh, a subservient ally, let's be very frank about it. I mean, in the relationship between the United States and Ukraine, Ukraine is subservient to the United States on, in all candor. He's asking them to interfere in an American election, to, 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 yeah. to spill dirt on, on an opponent. I mean, we can't have that. I mean, we can't pretend that that's tolerable and, oh, we'll just wait until the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary. It's, I'm sorry, it's just too grave. Is there, is there something, David, that would make an impeachment inquiry the, the right thing to do? Or is it, I mean, is there anything <laughs> the president can do? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing, I mean, are, are, are you saying right. there's nothing? No, um, I'm not that saying that, I'm, but uh, I agree with Mark on the severity of what he did. I'm not saying that he, I thought, think he did an impeachable offense. I'm just saying, look at our context. And our context is we're in the middle of an election year and we should not walk down a path that will lead ultimately to failure in 99%. I really do not think, and Mark and I may disagree on this, that the Republican senators who hung with Donald Trump through Charlottesville, through three years of moral turpitude, uh, of a thousand outrages that we speak about on every Friday, I just don't think they're going to break with them. And I don't think the Republican voters are going to break with them. They'll find some way. And, and Mark, I guess what I have about more that confidence point? in Republicans than David does. But I'd say, you know, I, and I don't argue. So I Mark, mean, but let me just, this is totally disruptive. I mean, it's a totally disruptive to the process. David's right. It, it, it totally uh, intrudes and, and puts everything else aside. But I will say this. If, if you're picking sides from the Democrats, you want the Intelligence Committee. You want it to be Adam Schiff against and, Devin Nunes. And, I mean, that's a, that's a in, mismatch in talent. And in just five seconds, you're saying it's worth it to go through with this, even if the Senate does not vote to convict. You're saying it's worth it. it, it yes, okay. it is. I mean, I, we, have, we cannot sit here and pretend that this didn't happen and that it's not serious what this president has done and it should be disqualifying. Mark Shields, David Brooks, thank you.